Hello again. I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is eight self-improvement lessons based on what I've learned in the last 31 years as a family therapist. The third lesson has to do with healthy grief. The reason the lesson is included in the eight is, in my observation, many people, marriages, families, parents, and society is stressed by blocked grief. Grief that is incomplete and people who don't know what they need to know about healthy grieving. The purpose of this video is to pique your curiosity and to motivate you to learn about healthy grief in your life and in your family. I'm going to pose a series of questions that have occurred to me across the 30 years I've been studying this. And I hope you'll be intrigued by how much you don't know. So um, let me challenge you to answer these questions. First, can you name six common losses that all people experience throughout their lives other than death? We grieve many, many things, not just death. Can you name at least six? Okay. Most people, when they think of grieving, if they've studied at, studied at all, think of um, the emotional phases of grief. I propose there are three separate related uh, levels of grieving, all of which need to be completed in order for healthy grief to occur. Name these three levels and name the several phases that we all go through in each level. Can you do that? Most people can't. Next, some people are able to grieve better than others. Some families are better able to grieve than others. There are requisites that we need in order to grieve well. In my studies, I've identified seven specific requisites that persons need in order to mourn their losses effectively. I invite you to try and name even four requisites out of the seven. Can you do that? Another fundamental question that puzzles many people, and people have vague or inaccurate ideas, is the question, just how long does grieving take? A different way of asking the same question is, how can you tell when someone is done, quote unquote, grieving? How can you tell? What are the signs or symptoms that indicate she or he is finished grieving. How can you tell? Do you know? Another question that many people have had no reason to investigate is, can grieving be slowed or even stopped? Or is it just a natural process like digesting food or gestation of a child? Um, is it a natural process that will go from beginning to end? Or can certain circumstances slow it down or even stop it? What do you think? Yes? No? I don't know. What are the specific signs if grief has been blocked, which it may be, what are the specific symptoms of incomplete grief? Can you name them? They're very specific. The converse of that question is, what are the signs that grieving is completed? Can you name them? Many people can't. I propose that each person and each family has what may be called a grieving policy. That may not mean anything to you, 
but uh, meditate on that, think about that. You know what a policy is. A policy is a, a group of rules and values about some subject. Uh, so, can you describe what a personal grieving policy is or a family grieving policy? If you can, can you define what your family's grieving policy is? I bet you can't. Another question that's important for all of us is when someone we care about has experienced a major loss or a series of small losses and they need to grieve, what do they need from us as supporters? How can we specifically help people who need to grieve? What is an effective grief supporter? Can you define that? Finally, how is the process of grief, whether it's allowed to complete or it's interfered with, how does the process of grieving relate to depression? <clears throat> how does it relate to the disturbing trend that's increasing in at least America these days of obesity? And how, do, how does grieving relate to any one of the four types of addiction? There are specific connections between grief and each, th each one of these three stressors. Can you describe the connection? These are nine questions that, in my biased opinion as a therapist, every person walking the earth ought to be able to answer clearly, factually, without vagueness. Can you answer these questions? Could each of your parents? Can your spouse, if you're married, if you're committed? Can each one of your older children answer these questions? If not, you or they are at risk of some significant psychological and even physiological problems that may come from incomplete grief. It is a widespread, common, unremarked stressor in our culture, perhaps in your family. Lesson three in the Break the Cycle website will give you all the answers to these questions and more perspective and let you know how can you promote healthy or good grief. Thank you, Charlie Brown. How can you promote good grief inside your skin, inside your home, inside your family, and how can you teach your children to be good grievers. I hope you'll study lessons one, two, and three in the Break the Cycle website. Thanks for watching.